Hello, and welcome once again to Lato's Law. I'm Steve Lato, attorney at Law in the State of Michigan. I've been practicing on over 26 years in the fields of consumer protection and lemon law. I often write about this stuff for places like roadandtrack.com. I've written a few books, including a book called The Lemon Law Bible, uh, which I wrote a while back. I actually wrote uh, The New Lemon Law Bible, which is what this one is, to update one I wrote a few years earlier. But uh, this is The New Lemon Law Bible, Everything a Smart Consumer Needs to Know About Automobile Law. If you want a copy, we'll talk about it at the end of the podcast. Today we're going to talk about used car lemon law. And the reason I'm talking about this is that people will call my office, and I've talked before about the flow chart that happens as I try to explain how the law is applied to you based on what you bought. And so the first question I ask anybody who says I bought a defective car is I go, was the car purchased new or used? And the reason I ask is that Michigan's lemon law, along with the lemon law of most states, only apply to new cars. Now, there are some small examples where it might apply to a late model used car, but the exception is so small, I hate to even talk about it. But generally speaking, if you bought a brand new car, Lemon Law will cover you if you meet the rest of the criteria. However, if you bought a used car, okay, don't think Lemon Law, just think of other things. So one of the big things then is, did you buy the used car as is? So for instance, we know that sales between individuals are presumed to be as is. So you're driving down the street, you see a car on somebody's front lawn with a for sale sign in the window, you buy it. That vehicle is being sold to you as is most likely, which means that you don't get any warranties and what you're buying is what you get. Car could explode a split second later. Watch all my prior episodes as I talk about this quite a bit. So we're not talking about that either. What we're talking about here is this, and I get this phone call about once a week. Someone says, Steve, I bought a used car. But it came with a warranty, so it was not purchased as is in that sense. It came with a warranty. The car is defective. Can I get my money back? And people jump from the car is defective with a warranty, can I get my money back? And they jump very quickly, (laughs) which is unusual because if you think about it from the perspective of the lemon law, if you buy a brand new car and it's in the shop four times, and it hasn't been repaired in Michigan, three times in some other states, then you can get your money back. And people will often call me and say, Steve, I just got this vehicle. I bought it used. The guy told me it was inspected at the dealership. I'm driving down the road and the engine explodes. Can I get my money back? And I say, well, first of all, you have to understand that if that was a brand new car, you wouldn't get your money back. So obviously you don't get your money back with a used car because the standards are going to be lower. You're not going to have as many protections as you would with a brand new car. Okay, so you have to ask yourself, what do you have when you've purchased a used car with a warranty? So I've talked about this in some other settings previously, but the first question you always have to ask yourself is, what's the warranty cover and who offered the warranty? Okay, and the reason I ask that is I've had people say, I got the vehicle has a warranty. I say, who's it from? They say, I don't know. I said, well, I know you got it from the dealership, right? And they say, yeah. I said, did they tell you that they would fix the vehicle and did they put that in writing? Or did they sell you a warranty from somebody else, a third-party warranty? So in other words, you go to a, a, a General Motors used car dealership and they sell you a, a service plan or service contract that General Motors backs, okay? That means that you've got a warranty or a service contract with somebody else, not the dealer. But quite often, dealerships do sell vehicles used where they say, we will warrant this vehicle for 3,000 miles or three months. And it's usually pretty short. But I've seen that quite a bit. And people say, you know, I bought this vehicle. It's used. It's got this three-month, 3,000-mile warranty on it. And the engine blew up. Can I get my money back? Okay. So let's let's think of these two different things now. There's the the, the third-party warranties and there's the dealership warranties. The third-party warranties can get disposed of pretty quickly here in this discussion in that if you bought a used car and it came with a third-party warranty, you can read that contract, because usually it is a service contract, and see specifically what it covers and what it doesn't cover. And it'll say things like we cover the engine and the drivetrain, but we don't cover internally non-lubricated parts or some other silliness. And you'll find out very quickly that, yeah, there's certain things they cover, certain things they don't cover. And then people ask, well, what happens if they can't fix it under that contract? Well, in many states, as long as they keep working on it when you bring it to them, as long as they keep working on it in good faith, they're honoring that contract. That'll vary from state to state. So if you're in a state that you think might be a little more liberal than Michigan, feel free to contact a local attorney and ask the question about your particular state. But quite often, you have a service contract and your transmission blows up. 
You bring it in as long as it's covered. They'll work on it. They give it back to you. You know, they, they probably upheld their end of the bargain. Bigger question, like I said, let's get back to the typical phone call. I just bought a used car. It's five years old. I'm the third owner. I am not talking about the lemon law here, but the engine just blew up. Can I get my money back? Well, as I said, no. Uh, and even if it had been brand new, you couldn't do that. So you have a used car, engine blew up, but it's covered by warranty. And the warranty is from the dealership, okay? And I always tell people, number one, I hope you got that in writing. Because I've had a lot of people tell me that they think they have a warranty. And I say, well, you, with what evidence do you have of this? And they say, well, the guy told me. Well, as we've discussed ad infinitum previously, or ad nauseum perhaps, <laughs> they mean different things. They're just both in Latin. Um, if they tell you something, but don't reduce it to writing on that piece of paper that says, this is our complete agreement and things not written here don't count, then you might not have any coverage. But let's assume it's a perfect world and you were smart enough to get a piece of paper that says 3,000 miles, three months we cover and it lists some things that are covered. Now, again, you got to hope it's going to cover stuff because I've had people tell me, they say, Steve, I was driving on the road and like the hood flew up. Is that covered? I'm saying, I don't know. I don't have the, po- the documents in front of me, but you might. What do you think? What does it say? You know, and quite often it'll say, you know, engine and transmission only or drivetrain only or some real limited thing, Okay. Hopefully, it's covering the most important parts, like the engine and the transmission. Uh, So you have this three-month, 3,000-mile warranty. You're driving along, your engine explodes on the way home from the dealership. Let's make it good, okay? No, you can't have your money back. And if you ask them, they'll laugh at you. But you do need to go in and try to invoke the warranty. So in other words, you're going to have the vehicle brought to the dealership, and you're going to say, hey, I've got the three-month, 3,000-mile warranty. I haven't driven that long nor that far. And the engine blew up, and I believe it's covered by your warranty. Fix it. And now, this is where it often gets ugly. I've had a lot of people call me and tell me, they say, Steve, I did just that. I brought it to the guy, and the guy says, well, you know something, I'm looking at it, and I think it can be fixed. And now, I'm looking at it, I don't think it can be fixed. This is what someone's telling me. Okay, so like, let's suppose it's a, it's a, a V6, okay, and you pop the hood and you look, and the two cylinder banks have actually split <laughs> to where it now looks more like a flat six, except for that the two banks aren't attached anymore. Split right down the middle. And the guys at the dealership looking at it going, yeah, I think it can be fixed, okay? Well, here's the ironic part. It's your job under the warranty to return the product to them and tell them, I would like you to fix this under warranty. It is then their job to repair it. I've had people tell me before that they said, that, hey, Steve, I called the dealership and I said, I want you to fix this. And they proposed a fix that I don't like. And so I, I told them I wasn't going to let them do it. Can I get my money back? And I, I wish I could get like a, a, I don't know, like a novelty horn sound so that whenever someone said, and can I get my money back, I could just hit it and have an in their ear because uh, the answer to that question is almost never. No, you can't get your money back. Getting money back from a used car seller, um, there are many, many easier things to do in this world than that. So uh, they propose to fix you don't like. Well, unless you're a certified master mechanic, and I've had those phone calls too, I would suggest that you let them try their fix. Because as I always like to do in my own head, because I'm an attorney, and and, uh, to use a chess analogy, you try to think a few moves ahead, okay? So let's suppose that they proposed a fix that you don't like, and you said, I don't like this fix. And they said, too bad. That's the, that's the fix we propose. Well, then you could file a lawsuit and say, I think they're in breach of the warranty. And their attorney's going to show up in court and say, Your Honor, my guy offered to fix it, and they wouldn't let him. And a judge is going to look at you and go, why'd you file this case? You should have you 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 let him try. They said they were willing to try. Why wouldn't you let them try? Now, you can make the argument they were attempting a futile fix, but no, you have to let them try. And especially when you realize that if they try and they fail, your case is better, right? So the only thing you'd have to fear is that they're going to try and succeed, which you shouldn't fear that because that's what the warranty says. The warranty says if it breaks, we'll fix it. Worst case scenario, they fixed it. No, that's actually the best case scenario. So when you call them up and say, hey, I just had a failure covered by the warranty. I want you to fix it. The next step should be bring it back to them and show it to them. Now, they might say, we don't have a repair facility here. Depending on the laws in your state, they might not need one. 
But they might say, well, we have a deal worked out with a local garage. Take it there. Let them take a look at it. Now, I've heard from a lot of people who said, Steve, I have this three-month, 3,000-mile warranty. I'm 1,000 miles in, two and a half months in. Okay, so I got two weeks left in the warranty. And next thing I know, the guy's dicking around with it, where I took it to his guy. His guy called him. And then neither of them will call me back, so I went and talked to the mechanic, and the mechanic says, I don't know, the guy at the dealership says he won't authorize this. He's, he's making some phone calls. And, of course, time is ticking off the clock, right? Well, you got to deal with that, but the point is you got to let them try. Now, if they refuse to work on it, and I've had that happen also, then you've got a breach of warranty because the warranty says if it breaks, we'll fix it. And so if it breaks and they refuse to fix it, that's a clean-cut case a breach of warranty. Now, it's not a lemon law claim, okay, but it is a breach of warranty claim, okay? And then you could theoretically sue them for the cost of repair, okay? That's how one way you measure damages. Or the other one is the diminution in value. How much are the goods devalued by the defects that caused you to have this breach of warranty claim? And so if it's going to cost $3,000 to get that engine fixed properly, theoretically, you can sue them for the three grand, and we're talking about a small claims court case. And that's the problem, really. So a lot of these cases that people have in theory aren't worth pursuing. And that's one of the big distinctions between the Lemon Law and other claims is that in Michigan and many states, the Lemon Law says if you prevail, you get your attorney fees and court costs paid by the bad guys if you win. And by bad guys, I merely mean the other side of the V. Okay? In a breach of warranty claim, you're not going to get your attorney fees and court costs paid unless you can find a statute that allows you to get them. Now, the Magnus and Moss Warranty Act says you can recover them in a case involving consumer goods and a warranty claim. So you might be able to get those covered, but not a lot of attorneys want to talk about cases like this because they know darn well that if they go into court and they say, Your Honor, I've got a $3,000 claim. This guy refused to pay it. You know, we want three grand. The judge goes, here you go. I'm going to give you a judgment for $3,000. Now you say, I want $25,000 in attorney fees to cover my costs through trial. That a lot of judges are going to look at you and go, you spent $25,000 spinning your wheels to get a $3,000 judgment when your client could have gone to small claims court? And don't get me wrong. I've had judges who gave me the money after I showed them why it was necessary, and you can get the money. But enough attorneys have been burned in these cases to recognize that some judges don't like awarding this much attorney fees on this much damages. So a lot of attorneys will tell you in a case like that, yeah, you've got a claim, but it's not worth me pursuing it for you, okay? But really the key is that you've got to let them try to work on the vehicle under the warranty. So a lot of people say, Steve, I just dropped like $30,000 on a late model foreign car, Bought it from this little specialty shop, dealership, and the guy swore to me all this stuff about the vehicle. He had it inspected. His mechanics looked it over. This is the nicest one of these that they've ever seen. And, you know, he was grudgingly selling it to me, and and he sold it to me. And it's got the three-month, 3,000-mile warranty, and I'm driving down the road, and the engine explodes, and I take it to my mechanic who says they couldn't have inspected it. Otherwise, they would have seen that the gonculator was about to let loose. Okay? So, you know, you're, you're, you're feeling burned at this point. But unfortunately, your burnt feeling doesn't translate into a legal cause of action. You still have got to ask yourself these simple questions. That was, did you buy it new or used? Used. Did it come with a warranty? Yes or no? Came with a warranty. Have you let them try to honor that warranty? Because if you say, well, no, I haven't. I'm so angry about them lying to me. Well, you don't have a case yet. You don't have a case yet. Because for all you know, you might bring that vehicle in And they might repair it perfectly, and they might give it back to you with a bow on it and apologize. (laughs) It's never going to happen. But the point is that you got to let them try. So the phone call I usually get is from somebody who is post-engine blowing up, but prior repair attempt. And they're saying, can I get my money back because my engine blew up? I know they lied to me, and the vehicle's got a warranty, so I must have some cause of action. I must have some rights, correct? Yeah, you've got rights but you can't pursue them until you've exhausted your remedies, for lack of a better word. And your remedy is bring the vehicle back to them and let them try to fix it. So that's the key, is who's got which obligation and have the obligations been fulfilled or not. And you don't want to ever go to court and say, Your Honor, I bought a used vehicle, smartly got a warranty on it, the engine exploded, the guy told me his planned repair attempt was going to be such and such, and I didn't like it, so I refused to let him try, I filed the lawsuit because I want my remedy now. The judge is going to say, you're too early. 
you should have let the guy try to fix your vehicle because for all you know, he might have, okay? And as I like to tell people, you've got a better case if they try and fail, especially if they try and fail repeatedly, than if they offer and you refuse. In fact, if, you off, if they offer and you refuse, there's a very good chance that you're actually eliminating your ability to pursue anything. So again, the flow chart goes like that. Was the car purchased new or used? If new, possibly Lemon Law. If used, okay, did it come with a warranty or was it sold as is? And if it came with a warranty, who is the warranty from? Is it from the dealership or is it a third-party service contract? Okay, the service contract might get breached. I found those more often than not uh, in this setting. I found more of those than I do of, of the dealership warranties. And in fact, I haven't filed a dealership warranty breach case in quite a while because usually the pieces of junk get outside the 3,000 miles. And I think a lot of dealerships know there's something wrong with the car, but they suspect it will last longer than 3,000 miles, and that's how they get around it. So that's the process of what could possibly help you with a used car lemon law case. It's not lemon law in that sense, but it's a defective used car you might be able to pursue if it came with a dealership warranty. Again, I mentioned at the top, I do a book called The New Lemon Law Bible, Everything a Smart Consumer Needs to Know About Automobile Law. If you want a copy, uh, six bucks. Six bucks. I'm practically giving them away, okay? It includes postage. I'll sign it. I'll send it to you. Just email me at the email address I'm about to give you, and uh, I will invoice you via Square. Send you a signed copy of The New Lemon Law Bible. Questions or comments is always shoot them my way, as well as... L-E-H-T-O-S-L-A-W.com. And I'm on Twitter at Steve Leto at S-T-E-V-E-L-E-H-T-O. And this show is on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Podbean, Google Play, and YouTube. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye.